Hey guys, this is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Bandai Models, and today I am going to build this kit. The 172nd scale, high grade, Joe Hound, uh, from the Kayuku Sinki Amin Warriors of the Battlefield animated series. Hopefully I said that correctly. Yeah, this is one of these suits from one of the model kits from that series that uh, I heard it's over. I haven't had the chance to finish watching it. Oh, it's episode one, but I heard it was pretty good and they had some really cool uh, mech uh, designs and uh, kits out there. So much so that uh, I did build, you know, the um, uh, the Malice Kimbu last year, and this year I built the Stork Hound, which Stork Hound, sorry, the um, Stork Carrier, that uh, I won third place at uh, Mosquito Con. And now I want to build this guy. I have other kits from the series, one a couple that I just picked up recently, but uh, I kind of like the design on this one. The other design features of the other mechs look really cool. I'm not, not knocking it, but something about this one feels very, very um, chunky and what I would like to refer to as tanky. Like a tank type mobile uh, mech. And I like how broad and wide the uh, the shoulder is on this, um, on this mech. It, it looks really neat and so much so that uh, when I saw it, I said, "This this this kit screams customization to to the, to the nth degree." I can see a lot of cool things I can do with it. So much so that this will be customized. I'm going to customize it and um, and give it a lot more detail, like I did with the Malice Kembu last year. Malice Kembu, I just put plating on it. This time for this one, I want to try other things, especially along the areas of the shoulder, um, the, the areas on, on the backpack or on the back area or on the top of its head or where the, the shoulder, um, where these parts are. Um, maybe this part here, because as I'm looking at the uh, image from the, uh, on the website, um, right now, this is in a kneeling position, where I believe this front plate skirt armor is pull is pulling up. I want to see if maybe we can add additional skirt armor, maybe update the um, the legs a bit, and so on. It comes with the machine gun and some grenade launchers. I don't know where those are. Maybe I should watch the anime and figure it out. But yeah, I really the, the Johan has a, a similar look to that of the um, oh I forgot the name of the mobile suit that was in um, Double O Gundam. If anybody remembered the um, not the um, not the uh, God what the hell is it called? I'm not talking about the the mobile suits that Double O Gundam went. I'm thinking of the one that was in, uh, oh god, what the hell, okay, so in episode one of Double O Gundam, um, where we all remember seeing Cessna as saying, as a young kid, running away from, from the battle, you know, trying to survive, and it, he goes up against, uh, you know, tries to take on the mobile suits himself with, with a machine gun. But it was like uh, that scene where he was like, uh, he sees the Gundam for the first time, but it's those mole suits from that episode. And I'm sorry, I'm kind of like, this is things I'm remembering right now that I wish I remember the name. Eventually we'll talk about that later on. But let's just say that it, it that's that that's how I remember this mole suit. And then of course the other variants. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Um... Yeah, this one I'm going to build and customize it and see how far I can go with it. It's so much so that I have some resin part kit uh, parts. I have leftover parts from other kits. We're going to try to see if we can get a kit finish. Um, here's what it looks like front and rear. As you can see, it's very, very basic on the, on the back part of the kit and as well as the front. 
Um, I kind of like how it poses like that, how it opens, or how it's like expanding out. It has that machine gun with the uh, with the uh, detachable clip. Um, maybe we may have to update that machine gun to something a little bit cool. I like the hands, pretty cool. Yeah, it has a swivel eye. I wonder if it's. I wonder if the kit is big enough for other things like oh I don't know maybe an LED light. Who knows? We don't know. Here are the other kits uh, that was from the series: the Brady Hound and the Brady Hound Brad's exclusive. Brady Hound's not bad. I kind of like the the uh, stable um, the the wings on the side of, of the ch of the uh, shoulder. And I do like the the paint the paint scheme, um, a tannish color with the brown and maybe a little bit hint of green here. We may use that color. We may go something else. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, this is really really nice. I can't wait to see. Well, we're gonna start building on it. So let's open it up and see what we have to work with here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By the way, just to give you a heads up. This kit is still available at Gundam, at Hobby Link Japan, excuse me, at Hobby Link Japan. It's still available. I will post a link on my videos for the remaining uh, build se uh, series. And uh, if you guys want to help me out, click on the link, get yourself a kit, help help out, help out me help out the channel as I'm an affi affiliate with uh, um, Hobby Link Japan. Maybe get your hands on it. It looks, we're going to, work on this we're going to build it St uh, standard build then we're going to take it apart and then go to town with it so we have a darker brown color type tone Pretty nice. and here is the uh, sandy color tone which I have paint for brown color tones here this could be some of the, of the legs and feet and here's the hands weird hands it's it, it it has two thumbs and three fingers so it's like a, a multi-universal type hand and then here are the remaining parts here's I guess this has to be the top part or maybe from the waist to the nose that's the head part right there here this this is now a lighter this is like an in-between brown color tone brown and like an earth color back skirt and front skirt of course yeah, the only part that's white but this is more of an off-white color and then the remaining parts. Where is, I think we must have missed the part where we, uh, the machine gun. It could be in the other parts. And then we have the only stickers which represents the sensor and LED and the uh, light source. No clear parts. Of course, here is the manual. Let's uh, put this kit away. Just these parts, you know, put them here. Okay, so here is the suit. Parts guide. I see no X's. And I don't see no polycaps, too. That's kind of neat. Uh, we have the assembly of the legs. So we're starting from the legs up. And then the waist unit assembly. Very thick parts, I see. Like, well, like the actual kit is, like all the parts are thick in assembly. Then there we go from the body. And then the assembly of the arms. From the arms, we assemble the head. And then we put it all together. And then I guess the weapons assembly had a how the some so the hands can be closed fist hand and an open hand. Okay, parts forming. And then we have the rifle, 
with the uh, added attachments there. And then you can put this in what we refer to as a park state, so that way it's kneeling down and parked, and so that way the pilot can get in. You know, I'm surprised that with all the detailed features, and obviously it's going to be my second build, uh, second version of this kit that I built, or second kit of this series. Um, since it's a 172nd scale, usually the um, figures are about roughly around this big. Why wouldn't they introduce an ability to show like where the canopy opens so you can stick a pilot in there? I think they uh, dropped a ball on that, but let's understand. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was a cost reason or something. Um, it is an expensive kit though, but that's because of the license and all that stuff. And uh, here is what the kit looks like assembled with its rifle. It has this weird um, kneeling up, uh, kneeling pot. Uh, well, actually, they're both on it. I'm sorry, but I didn't realize it was bend. So this part opens up to bend down and support the kit or support the, 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 the mech when it's kneeling down. And it's awesome pose right there. Then here is the color guide. So we have a light brown parts a brown parts, a dark brown part, so three different types of brown. White part right there, dark gray, and then the green parts for the uh, sensor. So you have five paints, six if you want to call it, uh, you know, just paint the center option. This is, this, is, I see this as a very simple and easy kit to build and something to work with to build something else out of it. Now, I, for one, cannot tell you what I'm going to use because I don't know what I'm going to use yet. Um, I would like to display parts, but then it will be here forever. So I think the best thing to do is begin the assembly of this kit step by step, inch by inch, put it together, see how it looks overall, and then we'll go from there and then really uh, um, try, to, try to see what we can work with here, what we can scratch build, what we can break or maybe what I can use in other parts to add this kit even further even though it's a 170 I'd like to try to keep the scale the same with all the parts but I know that that's sometimes usually a little bit beyond the realm of belief and I'm not gonna go out and buy parts of a 172nd scale kit to add to this so even if I mix a 1 100 scale part or a 144 scale part it's how we do it it matters so, we're going to make a unique version of the Joe Hound. Let's begin, let's stop talking and let's begin building high grade Joe Hound.